I chose not to let everything win but my drive to get me to the top. What to do, KTTV? This is KT, and I'm coming at you live with another episode of the Daily K Podcast. And on today's episode, we have school psychologist and host of the Psychotic Bum School radio show, DJ Rome. How you doing today, Dr. DJ? Oh, we good to go, good brother. How you doing out there? Hey, man, I won't complain. I'm glad that you uh, found a little time to take a few minutes. I know you're out in Kelly, and I know it is a lot going on between the sickness, but also... As a school psychologist, there's a lot going on, man. So thank you for taking a few minutes out the busy schedule. Oh, thank you for having me, man. It's quite an honor. Uh, you were on the Psychotic Bump School radio show, so I know you know how to bring it, good brother. So it's an honor for me to be here uh, with you and your audience this time. Yes, sir. And, and once again, thank you for sharing that platform, man. Welcome. Indeed. Welcome. Indeed. Indeed. You fit right in real well. Hey, so before we get into things, man, can you give us a little background on you in education and even how did you get into the mental health field? Yeah, for sure. Uh, probably working on close to 30 years of being in an education in general, it sort of fell into my lap because coming out of high school, man, I was just so certain that I was going to have a career in music. Like first and foremost, I was playing guitar back then. And the only thing that I was interested in post high school was playing funk and rock guitar in a band somewhere or become a studio musician. So perhaps the second semester of my high school year, a chemistry teacher who I was a TA for kept speaking into my ear. He said, apply to college, apply to college. And I saw so many people also doing that. I said, well, I'll apply. And I got in and um, the rest is history. So I did earn a bachelor's degree, did go to work uh, trying to get into the music business. But ultimately, I kept hitting my head against the wall. Uh, concurrently with that, I did develop a reputation as a promoter and DJ in the underground soul movement in Los Angeles. So concurrently, while those other ambitions were trying to manifest, uh, I kept meeting people who were getting on their feet in the field of education. And so I'd say, you know, not to date myself, in the mid 90s, I, I made the switch. You know, I became a teacher's aide, a paraeducator. And then the following year, um, I joined a classroom where I was invited to enjo- uh, join a special education classroom and uh, fell in love with it, man. And so I became a substitute teacher a few years after that and was a substitute teacher for about 14 years. And 11 years into that, I got into school psychology and I, I was just trying to figure out what's the next step to really solidify not only my career, but my life. As much as I love being a substitute teacher, uh, and you know this because you work with teachers and substitute teachers, uh, as much as I loved it, it, it's not reliable. You're waiting by the phone all the time, and it's better to have guaranteed income, especially over the summer, because you educators have your checks doled out, you know, a little bit set aside each month for you. So it's nice to have that during the summer if if you're fortunate enough to have that. So I wasn't getting it as a substitute teacher. I was not getting that. So my life was really rocky financially, just up and down. And so I was thinking, well, what will bridge the worlds together between mental health, education and learning? And I said school psychology. So I became a school psychologist, good brother. So going on 11 years now, I've I've been doing this work. So it's been a blessing. Yes, uh, man, that, that's an awesome story, man. Um, right. The good thing about it is I relate so much as for starting as a TA, man. You know, just, just mm-hmm. going in, being a para, working in special ed, man, and just saying, this is what I want to do. And that was in 2001. And so mm-hmm. my last year as a special ed teacher was 2016. Uh-huh. Yes, sir. Yeah. So in the game for a you while. Know the game. <laughs> you know the journey really, really well. That's awesome. Yes, sir, man. And so now as a school psychologist and, and understanding what we're dealing with mm-hmm. um, and even understanding the numbers in your area, mm-hmm. are you seeing students and staff? Uh, well, how are you seeing them deal with the pandemic on that end? Yeah, it's been hard because my district, my particular campus is in the hardest hit area in my region. I'm in Northern California, 
And so it's a Title I school, which means that it's demographically diverse and they're uh, assumed to have certain acute needs that may not be reflected in other more affluent areas. And so dense populations tend to lend themselves to a high potential for a coronavirus outbreak. And that's exactly what's happening. And so I'm seeing a myriad of responses. I'm seeing uh, a few students rise to the occasion and try to hang in there with distance learning. However, at the same time, I'm seeing families really struggling to keep their head above water, to keep shelter over their heads. I'm talking to parents who literally, literally are about to check out of a motel with no clear next destination in sight as a result of this pandemic, as a result of the devastation that it's had economically on our communities. And as they say, if this country has a cold, the black community has the flu. So everything in our community tends to be exasperated or exaggerated compared to the rest of the nation. So I've seen a full gamut of uh, a little bit of coping, a little bit of management. Uh, overall, however, I'm seeing more suffering and struggling than I do the other. Man, and as a school psychologist, like, and given tips, because I'm going to do this for Wellness Wednesday, mm -hmm. what are some of the ways that you start to heal or start to talk about those conversations with your students? Yeah, that's a good question because everybody is coming to it with their stuff already in tow. You know what I mean? It's kind of like that song by Erica Badu from your great state of Texas. She's from Dallas, but she had a song called Bag Lady. And so uh, what she was talking about is we all carry our stuff with us, sometimes from relationship to relationship, from situation to situation. And in the field of school psychology, I, I see a lot of overlap with that. And so what I've been trying to encourage people to do and to really keep aware of is despite what your needs may be or despite what your issues are that you might be trying to focus on, the most important thing, full stop, is just surviving this thing and putting all that aside without putting too many additional expectations upon yourself to perform at a certain level, to execute at the level that you were prior to the onset of this pandemic and help them to modulate and moderate their expectations about what is acceptable and expected now. Now, not only is that important for our students, but of course that's important for educators who out here, we're doing a lot of distance learning. And so understanding that some of our kids who have acute needs and they may not be able to log in all the time because their families are going through stuff to, to not put too many educational curricula expectations upon them. You know what I mean? So for the students and their families, I try to help them remind themselves all the time to uh, modulate your expectations right now and just understand that what you can control is what you should primarily focus on. Not expect too much from yourself right now and try very hard to not be too hard on yourself right now. That's very, very important. Hey, man, that's why you want psych of the year right there, huh, man? That oh, is yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. <laughs> Congratulations, yes, sir. man. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yeah, that was a few years ago. But yeah, I carry it with me because it's so important. I mean, we think we should be operating at optimum level right now. And with all of these prevailing issues happening at the same time, uh, it's very, very hard to do that. And one reason I love the podcast, and I know you talked about this earlier, but as educators, man, we have some of the most awesome side jobs in the world. And uh, we don't so I know that you host the Psychotic Bump School radio show. Yes, sir. And that is, I mean, one, what do the students say? But then two, how long have you been doing it, man? And just give us a little bit more background about the, the show itself. Oh, the show itself. Well, it's amazing how you can live very compartmentalized lives as an educator because your students know you as Mr. Thomas or what have you. They may not even know Kendrick and what Kendrick do, what how Kendrick do outside of being Mr. Thomas, you know. And so we wear multiple hats. And so my students, for the most part, don't know what I do. And most of my coworkers and colleagues don't know what I do outside of the realm of what I do. But that is very intentional in a lot of ways because I, I love my privacy and I love keeping things 
uh, within their boundaries so that I can do what I do the way that I do it. Because on the Psychotic Bump School podcast, there are topics that can be a bit triggering. There are topics that can be a little bit controversial because I dive in, man. And uh, I talk about those things that are very, very relevant to our community. Psychotic Bump School, of course, comes from the great classic P-Funk jam by Bootsy Collins, uh, produced by George Clinton. I'm a big Parliament Funkadelic fan. I'm a Funkadelic relic myself. And so uh, it's in homage to those brothers, but also the fact that being a psychologist, I felt like I wanted to create an environment where I could combine the worlds of education, entertainment, mental health, and politics and do it in a way that was finessed so that it would seem like a seamless experience. So the Psychotic Bump School podcast has been on since September 2017. I consider it to be a variety show. Uh, Since that time, um, I have panel discussions. I've had you on and and you did an amazing job. Uh, The main focus of it is to really bring forth professionals such as yourself who can speak to our community about these important issues and times that we're in and make sure that you bring forth the professionals that can represent these professions uh, quite astutely. Like two weeks ago, we had an epidemiologist on. I've had entertainers on ranging from um, the good brother, Eric Rico, who's worked with uh, Randy Jackson, who was on American Idol, uh, all the way to the sisters in uh, New York by way of France, uh, by uh, by the name of Lay Nubian. They had a huge hit a few years ago called Maqueda. You can look that up. I've had uh, the sister Kim Hill on. She was the original singer of the Black Eyed Peas before Fergie. And so she's a good sister of mine. And I've had a ton of uh, educational professionals, like I said, just like yourself, a lot of psychologists, uh, licensed marriage and family therapists, licensed clinical social workers. And um, we, we just get it in, good brother. And so the idea is to bring out the best in our community and allow them to shine and to, again, represent their respective professions uh, in a way that reassures our community that we have everything that we need and we have trusted, verifiable sources, proven commodities in our community who can speak to these issues uh, professionally with insight, with uh, the, you know, the credentials to back it up and the, the conviction and the courage of their convictions to let people know that we are here. We're here to support, provide service and to represent black people as best as we can, because we're a beautiful, diverse people. And the fact that you're doing what you do and you're doing an amazing job on your platform just further speaks to that. And so I just want to bring forth as much black talent as I can. I, you know, of course, all is welcome. I don't just have only black folks on the show. You know what I'm saying? But uh, to this day and to this moment, if I can recall, I lost count some time ago. But Psychotic Bump School in three years has had easily uh, pretty close now to uh, between 250 and 275 different guests. And so we we, we get it in. So premiering and showcasing black talent is what that podcast is all about. Yes, sir. And what days do it air? Just just in case anybody trying to make sure to get locked in. 100 percent. Monday evenings from 530 p.m. to 7 p.m. Pacific time on radio station KCWG, the truth dot com. You have to get all of that in there. KCWG, the truth dot com. And it's called Psychotic Bum School. And while that's a gospel radio station, my show does not focus on gospel. I have nothing against it. But DJ Rome is a very spiritual brother who has uh, no judgment. And um, we talk about some very spiritual issues. In fact, uh, the most recent episode is just all music, just funky soul, underground uh, music from the, the, the best regions and corners of what underground soul music is all about. So uh, I definitely encourage people to tune in. You're going to have a wonderful time. And if you're not careful, you just might learn something. Hey, that's it, man. Doing it for the culture. Yes, indeed. So what's next for you in education and also what's next for the podcast? Well, next in education, I continuing on with my career. I mean, getting really close to being 30 years in this field right now. So continuing to develop up and coming psychologists. I have two interns this year. Every year for the last four years, I think I've had at least uh, one or two interns every year. So I just picked up a second intern to go through the rest of the school year with. So that keeps me very busy, busy. So continuing to give back to the profession to make sure that I do my part to raise awareness about the the need 
in this profession for black men, uh, number one, and black people in general. Um, I would like to further my own personal education and continue to grow and build my second language fluency with Spanish and perhaps spend some time learning, you know, Swahili and perhaps uh, Hmong as well, because we have a lot of uh, Hmong speaking students in, in, you know, the region I work in. So continuing to learn, continue to advance myself and continue to uh, personally develop myself. And as far as the podcast, man, I'm still trying to get uh, as much notoriety for it as possible and continue to let people know that this is a premier source for the best in underground funky soul music. And um, yeah, I, I just want to continue the mission of being sort of that that hybrid, you know, and just create this world of Psychotic Bump School to where it just really represents a universe unto itself. And uh, I hope to continue to provide that universe for the underground soul movement con currently with the educational community as well. Yeah, man, that, that is the way to do it. Um, because yes, we have a, like I say, just being African-American males in that field um, gives us an advantage because we are really seeing it front line. And then we're bringing it back to the community, you know, and being able to just have that voice is something awesome, man. So I appreciate the work that you're doing congratulate you on all the success and yes, if sir. somebody want to contact you man what is the contact information maybe they want to be a guest on the show or oh hit me up i have an instagram page just type in psychotic underscore bump underscore school i know that's a lot but psychotic bump school is also on facebook so you, you can hit up the facebook page and you can send a message to the KCWG website. So if you're having trouble remembering those call letters, it literally means keeping covenant with God, KCWG. So you can find me on all those platforms and I would love to meet you, especially if you know any uh, mental health experts or professionals or educators or up and coming musicians. Um, you're all welcome on Psychotic Bum School. So I'd be honored to meet you. Let's work, man. I sure appreciate yeah. the time. Uh, just Thank giving you. us some information because the podcast are, are, are informative, man. And I say all the time, if people knew just the resources that they can get from just doing this, because not like we're getting paid, you know, That's but right. it's just that sheer love of informing and motivating our community. And I think the more opportunities that people get, the more we can grow the culture. And so once again, thank you for taking some time out for the channel today and i look forward to getting this out to someone um and just sharing it man from the corona talk all the way to the podcast man uh, well i really appreciate that i mean it's so important right now we have this runoff election coming up in uh january on january 5th yesterday december 7th well two days ago by the time your audience sees this was the last day to register in atlanta if you're an atlanta georgia resident get registered to vote the race and the fight is not over we still have to stay engaged we got to vote every two years Keep in contact with uh, Mr. Thomas's show here because you get some really, really great insight and uh, follow Psychotic Bump School. And uh, it, I'm really honored to partner with you, good brother, on these issues. So thank you very much for having me. Yes, sir. All right. This is KTTV signing out. 100.